Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Vern Kynard. I'd like to welcome you here to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Uh, for those of you who are here and for those of you who are joining us online this morning, it's good to have you here with us as we celebrate All Saints Sunday, another holiday, if you will, in the church. Last week there was a celebration for Reformation, and this week we keep the celebration rolling on with All Saints. Um, several announcements before we begin our worship today. Um, first, we're having communion at the altar today. Yay! So, with that, um, also, we're uh, welcoming intent cards this week for you to drop those off. So there's a basket right here, which will be somewhere in this general vicinity when you come up for communion today. So, if you dropped your intent card in the communion, um, or not communion, excuse me, in the offering plate in the back, great, you did, you did fine. If you'd like to drop it in the basket here as you come up for communion, great, you can do that as well. So just look for that. Um, also, gosh, there's a lot going on today and next week. This afternoon, uh, we have a youth meeting uh, for middle and high school, our rivers and our seas, uh, for youth and their families at 4 o'clock, and then youth are going to play some uh, wiffle ball at 5 o'clock in celebration of the Braves winning the World Series. Go Braves! So um, that'll be fun this afternoon. Also, uh, between our services at 9.30, we will have a little uh, town hall, if you will, uh, to talk about the budget that we will vote on next week at our annual meeting. Uh, Mark has volunteered to lead that discussion, and that will be right here in the sanctuary at 9.30. So if you'd like to participate in faith formation, one of our adult classes, or um, connect our intergenerational faith formation, that will take place um, next door in the FLC, connect will of uh, the other classes in their respective classrooms, or if you want to join the conversation around the budget, that will be right here at 9.30. Next week is Thanksgiving feast. Uh, that will be roughly noonish next week. Um, if you haven't signed up, feel free to. A slight change from years past, Thanksgiving feast is open to everyone this year uh, because we have other things to celebrate next week as well. We have a new batch of faces joining St. Mark's next week. That's awesome. Uh, we also are hoping to celebrate our stewardship drive of those intent cards that we're asking folks to turn in throughout this week. Um, so with all of the celebration going on, we opened uh, Thanksgiving feast up to any family, um, anyone who wants to participate. So in that regard, please this week, if you'd like to come next week, um, sign up. You can call the office and sign up. Uh, there should be a sign up out there in the Northex. Or you can sign up on the website, on the church website. There's um, a link there that will take you to a registration for that. And that is so we can get a head count on food. Um, the bird will have the last word, as I have joked all week. So, um, yeah, so sign up for that as well. And then one final announcement. The Alleluia Ringers, which is our bell choir for third through sixth grade, begins today uh, at 9 a.m., um, in the midst of this worship service. So if you have a third through sixth grader that would be interested in being in the Alleluia Ringers, catch up with Caroline over here in the white um, and go ring some bells today. It'll be a good time. Um, with that, are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Oh, yes, there are. One other announcement. We want to hold in prayer today Brenda Joyce... Um, she had a hard episode this past week and is still in the hospital, so we pray for Brenda. We also pray for the Wilkie family um, as they grieve a death in their family. So um, we, we hold the Wilkies uh, in prayer, especially today as we celebrate all saints and remember all the saints who have died and gone before us. With that said, let us take some time to prepare our hearts and minds with some beautiful handbell music.
Thank you, Mindy and Allison and Robbie and Caroline. Will you please stand as you are able? We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin together in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of the ages, we give you thanks for saints, those of our day and of our days before, who nurtured us in faith, who shared the Bible stories with us, especially those of Jesus Christ, and who cultivated among us the sense of our own vocation to follow God's path. Help us not only to remember these blessed saints, but also to follow in the best of their examples and to live out our faith and lives so that others may see Christ reflected in all that we say and do. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And we continue with the remembrance of the saints. By the way, there are eight candles gathered around a central candle, the central candle representing Jesus Christ and the eight, those of St. Mark's membership who have died since last November's All Saints Day. time we praise you for all your servants who have done justice loved mercy and walked humbly with their God for all those who have faithfully served you witnessed bravely and died in the faith
give thanks for their shining lights in this world. And oh God, help us to let our lights so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. For you are the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Moses and Miriam. You are the God of Joshua and Deborah, Ruth and David. You are the God of the Old Testament priests and prophets, of the New Testament apostles and martyrs. You are the God of our mothers and fathers, the God of our children, the God of all people through all the generations. For those we have known and loved, who by their faithful obedience and steadfast hope have shown the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. We praise you, O God, especially for these saints we name before you this day. For Charleston Knox, Pat Morrison, Betty Garys, Faye Nell Ratledge, Bev Sero, Bob Gregory, Judy Sachs, Ruby Klutz, and for all that we acknowledge this day who has served as saints in our own lives, parents, spouses, teachers, mentors, and friends, all those who have challenged us to be all God created us to be. We now name those names silently in our hearts, remembering their faces or proclaiming their name aloud from our lips. As these lights shine and bells toll, O oh God, we remember with thanksgiving the saints who have been baptized at St. Mark's, who have joined the communion, the communion of saints worldwide and church universal, especially since last year's All Saints Day. Here at St. Mark's, we include Nicole Earnhardt, Joby Johnson, Nora Wells, Hikaru Hofer. Valentino Leone, Charlie McAndrew, Paxton Mayer. And we thank you, God, for all the saints alive today who continue to touch our lives and our faith journeys. We look ahead with hope and pray to be saints ourselves who inspire future generations. We join together in praying Keep us grateful for the witness of the saints of all generations, O Lord, and make us, like them, eager to follow the way of Christ. Then, at the last, bring us with them to share in the inheritance of the saints in light.
first reading is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. young people forward for some time together. We're going to sit a little different today. I want you to sit on the, on the lower floor here and face towards the altar. Sit out here. Sit out here and face that way. Because I'm going to put this table right here and these two candles. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Good. So, today is a day called All Saints Sunday. Notice anything different in church today that looks different? What? A lot of candles. A lot of candles. Last week, we had Reformation, and we also had Confirmation. And when we had Confirmation, where we said blessings around nine people, some of who are here today, we put our hands on them, we said a blessing, and then we gave them these little pumpkins. And these little pumpkins had a candle in them. And we said, let your light so shine, so that... They, so that others may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And we sang this little light of mine. We light candles today, all saints, because we celebrate that we are all saints. Charlie's a saint. River's a saint. Ryder's a saint. Paige is a saint. Mackenzie is a saint. Everyone here are saints. We all have a light to let shine. We all share the light of Jesus in the world. But part of All Saints is acknowledging that this light doesn't last forever. <sighs> candles can get blown out, right? These candles here mark folks who since All Saints last year have died. We die. But this light can't blow it out. That's the light of Jesus. That light is a light and a love that never goes out. That's part of the good news of all saints. Because Jesus, the light and love of Jesus, loves us so much that our light never goes out either. We are loved. Just like those folks there are loved. You are loved. Everyone here is loved. And we are all loved so much that we have the exciting job, the exciting opportunity, the exciting call to share that love with others. So remember that All Saints Sunday. Remember that every day. Remember that you are loved. You are loved and that you have the light of Jesus in you. 
and that you share that light with others. Can you remember that? Let's pray. Jesus, we give you thanks for your light and your love shared with us. Help us to let our light shine. Help us to love like you love us. Help us to share the good news of your love with our friends and with our neighbors. And we give you thanks for all the saints, for those in this room with us, for those watching with us from home, online, and for those who have died and gone before us and for their story that still remains with us. We give you thanks for your love and for your light. Amen. Thank you all for coming up this morning. Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. There's death in this story. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. There are tears in this story. The Jews said, see how he loved him. There is love in this story. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? There is doubt and sarcasm in this story. Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. There is a smell to this story. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? There is faith and hope and belief in this story. They took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. There is freedom in this story. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And there is love in this story as well. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So every Sunday is a type of an All Saints Sunday. We give thanks for the saints among us every day of the whole calendar year is a saint today. Last Sunday, there were a couple different individuals who walked out of church on Reformation Sunday with tears in their eyes. They had sung, a mighty fortress is our God. They had sung the words, were they to take our house goods, honor child or spouse, their life be wrenched away, and they walked out crying, remembering loved ones, remembering sometimes that, the, that life wrenches away all that we have and all that we love. There are tears in this story, but there's also love and hope. All through the waters of baptism, all who have been baptized are made and claimed as saints. So we remember that this day, and we named these eight individuals a while ago. I'll name them again here, along with a definition, a biblical definition of being a saint. Saints are believers in Christ Jesus. They're not only the baptized, but they're also believers. 
in 2 Thessalonians, among other places, it talks about the saints or those who have believed in Christ Jesus and being ready for Christ Jesus to return. And I think about our Lord's servant, Faynell Ratledge, who was here so many Sundays and throughout the week and who lived just right over there before she moved to the summit place. And she always was saying, I'll be ready. And Faynell walked fast. If you knew Faynell, she walked fast. She was always ready for the next thing. Ready for church, she was here early. Ready for the meal, she was there early. Ready to move to Summit Place, and she became an ambassador of Summit Place. She was an ambassador of Christ as well. But Faynell, she said, I'll be ready. When various people around St. Mark's would come by her house to pick her up, I'll be ready. Or at Summit Place to come by to pick her up for church, I'll be ready. Saints are baptized, and they are believers, and they are ready. Saints have faith and salvation. Jude, the little small book of Jude, says that, Beloved, while eagerly preparing to write to you about the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write and appeal to you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Eagerly preparing to write, our Lord's servant, Pat Morrison, in my years here, she just lived at Genesis. She was not at home, but she was in Genesis for a lot of years, and that's where I knew her. And I knew her as someone who would scribble little notes that basically just said, I love you. <laughs> I love you. She would write. She knew something about hope and faith and love and the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. And about two years ago, we buried her husband, Bob, and my correspondence then in subsequent years has been with their son, Robbie. Our Lord's servant, Pat Morrison, we remember this day. Saints are inheritors. Colossians chapter 1 says, May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And eventually it says that we have been named inheritors of the saints in light. And Charleston Knox is one of these inheritors. Charleston Knox had no strength of her own. She's a little girl. She, had a tw she has a twin brother who comes here to the preschool. But Charleston was born with no strength and no muscle and no anything except this beautiful little body. She survived almost three years when she was expected to die within six months. Just outside this window is a blue buddy bench that we will dedicate at the 1030 worship service this morning in Charleston's memory to be put on the playground. And the buddy bench says when there's a, a sad or a lonely child or individual, whoever it might be, they can sit on that buddy bench and someone else will come up and join them. And the two together will be stronger than one. Charleston will be made strong, has been made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. Saints are members of God's household. Ephesians chapter 2, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints. That was a, a, a tagline for the ELCA National Gathering for Youth a few years ago. You are citizens with the saints. And I lift up our Lord's servant, Betty Garys. Betty Garys, uh, in and out of the hospital and here and in Durham and Chapel Hill and in various places. And Betty died earlier this year. And yet her daughter was out here in costume on trunk or treat at night, celebrating and remembering her mother, Betty, but also laughing in the face of death because of this mindfulness that we are part of a community of citizens with the saints in light. Saints are made holy. First Corinthians says, to the church of God uh, that is in Corinth and to those who are sanctified or made holy in Christ Jesus. Paul begins many of his letters like this. That you have been sanctified, that you have been made holy. And our Lord's servant, Bob Gregory, who moved from Mooresville before I arrived here and down to Merle's Inlet and then over to Georgia. But he and, and Jerry were part of a choir and part of friendship circles and part of the community around here. They were made holy, and when you were in their presence, you felt like you were a special person. They made you feel that way. And so I lift up and remind one another of our Lord's servant, Bob Gregory, this day, as one who had been sanctified in Christ Jesus and one who helped bless others. Saints are living. 
Acts chapter 9 says, Peter went here and there among all the believers, and then he came down also to the saints living in Lydda, or Lydda. <laughs> Peter went here and there, and I'm no Peter going here and there, but, but I thought about when I moved here to St. Mark's, I met a woman named Bev Cerro, and we were talking about our backgrounds, and we both had lived in Vero Beach, Florida at the same time. <laughs> We both had lived just a few blocks apart, but she had gone to another Lutheran church while I served the, the other Lutheran church. But we had Vero Beach at least in common. And then we got to know one another's stories a little bit here and there. And being mindful of the saints who are living in this community of saints and the communion of saints that we are a part of, this small world that we're a part of. And so I lift up Bev Cerro as one with whom I've crossed paths with in mysterious and in wonderful ways. Saints are deceased as well. In Matthew chapter 27, this, this beautiful text of the, the end when Jesus Christ is crucified, if it can be beautiful, it says that at that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two and, and rocks split and the earth shook and tombs were open. And it's just this beautifully written text. And I think about an English teacher named Ruby Klutz who's taught here at Mooresville High School, who was among us as well, whose funeral wasn't too long ago. As an English teacher, she knew the power of the language and the power of, of having things torn asunder and how then that tearing apart, getting a bad grade on a paper maybe, might make that paper improved when that revision is turned back in, the next term paper, so to speak, for Ruby Klutz when she assigned her students to do those term papers. And that next paper was even better and stronger so that she could give that student what they deserved, perhaps that A. She knew of the power of tearing apart of Christ's crucifixion and then his glorious resurrection. Ruby Klutz. And saints are from everywhere. Revelation chapter 5 says they sing a new hymn. Everything in Revelation seems to be new. This new lamb that was slain has has now worthy to take the, the seal of the scroll and open up the kingdom of God for all believers, for you and for me, thanks be to Jesus Christ. The saints are from everywhere. And not too long ago, Judy and Jeff Sachs moved to Mooresville and Judy started coming to St. Mark's and one thing leads to another and she has this ongoing battle with cancer that finally got the best of her a few months ago. Her husband, Jeff, was one of those who walked out of church crying last Sunday after a mighty fortress, remembering Judy. But saints are from everywhere, and Judy had lived in the big city of Philadelphia where she met Jeff, and then she, they had moved to Apple Valley, Minnesota, and she walked out of here on, on church on her second Sunday here, her second Sunday, and I said, Judy, good to see you again. And right behind her was this other couple who happened to be from Apple Valley, Minnesota, their first Sunday here. And I said, welcome, where are you from? We're from Apple Valley, Minnesota. And immediately Judy pivoted, turned around, gave them a hug and welcomed them to my church. That was on Judy's second Sunday. Judy also lived in Chicago and then she blessed us here at St. Mark's as well. There are eight candles and those are eight saints named, but there are many more as you all remember and you all know. And so a moment of pastoral privilege, I'll name a ninth that saints are called, just to remind you that we are called, whether we are called as pastors or as uh, homemakers, as construction builders, as teachers, as healthcare workers, as anything, we are called. Saints are called. Romans chapter 1 says that. And so I lift up my grandmother, Rudisil, my mother's stepmother. She went to Lenore Ryan, she was from Hickory, Bobby Yunt, Rudisil. She went to Hickory, or she was from Hickory, went to Lenore Ryan, graduated, went to go work at St. John's Lutheran Church in Cherryville as a Christian ed worker. She also became the music director. She did everything in the church, both as a paid staff person, as a called staff person, before women could really be called to serve in that regard. And then throughout the rest of her life as a called volunteer for that congregation. She served that church and that congregation so many in wonderful and powerful and beautiful ways. And so I lift up my grandmother, Meemaw, and so many other saints in light among us. The text today from Romans that Tanya read so wonderfully a while ago 
includes the words, see the home of God is among mortals. The home of God is among mortals. Is among those I just named, is among those that we named a while ago in the waters of baptism, is among you, is right there on, off of Wiggins Road where Tanya and Bart and the Meadows live. The home of God is among mortals. The home of God is among us. The home of God is with us. God desires to be with us. God comes to us to wipe our tears away. God comes to be with us in the midst of mourning, in the midst of crises. God comes to us in the midst of doubt. God comes to be among mortals. And then when that is not enough, God comes to be in us. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you so that God can be in us to remind us of our saintliness, to invite us from the communion of saints to go forth and letting our lights so shine before others. Amen. With the communion of saints, we profess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way, especially Sullivan, Betty, Joan, Karen, Wendy, Carol, Ken, Jim, Martha, Brenda, Herb, 
Janet, Davi, and Gil, we also offer our Christian sympathy to Jeff Wilkie and the death of his mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. the ELW on page 152. salutary that we should at all times in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ by the witness of the Saints you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory and so with all the Saints and with all the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Most thy in the highest. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. Gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Those of you who uh, would prefer not to come forward or, and gather around the chancel rail for communion, there, are an, al there is an alternative method up here up front that either you can pick up or an usher can help you with in picking that up and bringing it back to where you are seated. You're also welcome to bring, if you did so, um, bring a commitment form, a pledge card this day, and I'll place this basket up here on this table, a bit more easier to access. Come, the table is ready.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.